Hello, LifeLens viewers. Today we uncover a high-stakes commercial litigation that has sent shockwaves through the corridors of power. Allegations have surfaced against President William Ruto, suggesting a covert plan to acquire an online propaganda machine aimed at countering hostility against his administration and bolstering his 2027 re-election campaign. The fallout between the president's close aides and the American owners of the 923,346 US dollars, 120 million Kenya shillings, software has laid bare a scheme to deploy confidential software with the capacity to spy on targets. This revelation is part of Dr. Ruto's re-election strategy. But that's not all. This case also sheds light on how public funds, withdrawn from confidential accounts, were intended to source technological solutions to ensure consistency and clarity in government communications. The potential court awards for breach of contract could see even more public money paid out. The lawsuit, filed on Monday at the Milimani High Court by Mary Wachuka Minor, a dual Kenyan and Canadian citizen, and owner of JIPE Inc., a company registered in Canada, brings these allegations to the forefront. In her court papers, Minor describes herself as an international data scientist and software engineer with expertise in disruptive and innovative technology. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this unfolding story, revealing more about the players involved and the implications for our nation. Welcome back, LifeLens viewers. Now, let's dive into the heart of the matter, the legal dispute that has brought these explosive allegations to light. It all began in New York, USA, where on May 13, 2024, Ms. Mary Wachuka was compelled to pay a hefty 950,430 US dollars, 23 million Kenya shillings, as compensation for a breach of contract to a firm she had subcontracted for a collapsed Kenyan project. Fast forward to now, and Ms. Wachuka has taken legal action against four senior government officials and two aides of President Ruto, seeking a staggering 2,246,320 US dollars, 292 million Kenya shillings, in compensation. She also seeks an order to restrain the defendants or their agents from sending her and her mother menacing death threats by phone, email, or any other means over the contract or the claim. The defendants in this high-profile case include National Treasury Principal, Secretary Chris Kiptu, Head of Public Service Felix Koske, Mr. Jayesh Saini, and Mr. Eric Neno, the President's speechwriter. According to the court papers drawn by Kanchori Mutali and co-advocates, the case revolves around the defendants' alleged fraudulent misrepresentation and breach of contract, which caused Ms. Wachuka a significant loss of 1 million 322,976 US dollars, 172 million Kenya shillings. The documents reveal that Mr. Ngeno had tasked Wachuka and her company, Jeep Inc., with delivering robust software capable of managing the president and his deputy's social media pages and deleting negative reactions to uploaded posts. The pitch indicated that the software could predict critical media coverage and prepare counter-strategies. Jipe Inc., which markets itself as a business solutions provider, was to receive 130 million Kenya shillings for this political tool. The deal, as outlined in the court papers, was conceived on November 7th last year at Moxie's restaurant in Kilimani, where Mr. Nieno met Ms. Wachuka. He informed her that the president had tasked him with sourcing technological solutions to guarantee consistency and clarity in government communications, among other things. He requested Ms. Wachuka, as a matter of urgency, to develop confidential software to manage strategic communications toward the president's 2027 re-election bid. The software was alleged to have the capacity to spy on targets. Ms. Wachuka who has worked on similar projects for governments worldwide, 
was attentive as the soft-spoken Mr. Ngano presented President Ruto's wish list. He revealed the President's frustration with his government's communication department, which was apparently failing him. The project was urgent, so Ms. Wachuka was to drop all other assignments and immediately commence developing the software that would address the needs of the President's communication department and that of his deputy, then Rigathi Gachagua. Last month, Mr. Gachagua was impeached by Parliament and replaced by Professor Kindiki Kithur. The software that President Ruto was allegedly hoping to purchase was unique, with top-of-the-range specifications. It was designed to perform ten critical functions. First, it was meant to manage the President's and his deputies' social media pages, enabling the deletion or hiding of harmful and vulgar comments and responding to positive ones. Additionally, the software was to be customised to monitor the Raila Odinga-led opposition, allowing the President and his deputy to track how the opposition manages communication, audience and reach. Welcome back, LifeLens viewers. Let's continue our deep dive into this unfolding saga with our next subtopic, Influence Trending Hashtags. The software at the centre of this controversy was designed to be a powerful tool for the government. It was programmed to monitor and influence trending hashtags on social media, gauge public sentiments about the president, and even measure his popularity based on ethnicity. Ms. Wachuka and her team of software developers in the US were tasked with customising this software to improve the image of the President and his deputy. According to Mr Ngeno, the President wanted the software to address his government's reputation problem, but the capabilities of this software didn't stop there. It was also designed to conduct searches on journalists and media houses, enabling the government to produce and disseminate dossiers that would counter the credibility of the media. In essence, the software would gather intelligence and produce reports on planned attacks by the media and opposition, making it easier for the Ruto administration to influence public perception. One of the most controversial features of the software was its ability to perform psychometric profiling and management. Government officials could map out behaviours, skills and knowledge to understand the mental processes and social patterns of politicians, using this information to their advantage. This function would help the government manage public perception by portraying itself in a positive light, while tainting the image of the opposition. After the initial meeting, Mr Sugeno directed Ms Wachuka to commence the project immediately, promising that the government would pay her for her services. Although no formal agreement on payment was made at the time, Mr Nino assured her that top officials close to President Ruto would fund the project. Among those mentioned was Mr Saini, the billionaire behind the Social Health Insurance Fund deal. A follow-up meeting on November 22, 2023, at an office in Arch Place on Nyangumi Road, introduced Ms Wachuka to Mr Saini who was identified as the man who would oversee the project and handle the finances. Despite her reservations about executing the project under Mr Saini's supervision, Mr Ngeno persuaded her to allow Mr Saini to present the project to President Ruto first. On December 18, 2023, Mr Ngeno contacted Ms Wachuka with the news that the President had approved the project. The approval was based on Mr Ngeno's pitch, and the tool's alignment with the government's messaging needs. The budget, according to Mr Ngeno, presented no problem as the money would be sourced from the National Treasury's confidential account or the 2024 budgetary allocation. Following this approval, Ms Wachuka formally subcontracted another firm, Texo, to execute the project codenamed Numera 2023. Texo, run by Sheldon Trent and Richardson Richardson, had partnered with Ms. Wachuka on several projects over the past decade. Despite the delays and financial penalties, Ms. Wachuka hoped the government would honour its pledge. However, as the project progressed, the situation deteriorated. On January 3rd, Ms. Wachuka had to pay the first instalment of the penalty for delayed payments to the subcontractors. 
Matters worsened when Tesso issued her a 12-day ultimatum to pay what was owed or face prosecution. Eventually, Ms. Wachuka had to agree to settle the dispute over the 22 million demanded by the company she had subcontracted. Stay tuned as we uncover more layers of this intricate and high-stakes legal battle. Welcome back, Life Lens viewers. As we reach the final chapter of this gripping story, we delve into the devastating personal toll this legal battle has taken on Ms. Wachuka. In her court papers, Ms. Wachuka reveals that she lost everything she had worked for while in the US, including her house, to settle the hefty fines imposed on her. On July 24th, she met with Mr. Njeno in a parking lot in Kilimani, where he once again promised to pay her all the cash promised for the job and advised her to be patient. However, since that meeting, Ms. Wachuka has yet to receive a single coin, as promised. Instead, she has been receiving death threats through email and text messages, which have also been extended to her parents. One such threat, sent at 9.45am on July 26th, chillingly read, Jackie Maynor, beware. We know what you are planning. You are angry because you were dumped now you want to destroy our country. We are putting you on notice. Move on. Ms. Wachuka has turned to the court for intervention, seeking an order to compel the government and its agencies to desist from sending threats to her and her mother. She also demands 119 million Kenya shillings for the breach of contract, 170 million Kenya shillings as compensation for her losses, an additional 12 million shillings paid out as a penalty for delayed payments to her subcontractors, and 47 million shillings lost through the forced sale of her house in the US. And there you have it, Life Lens viewers. A story of high stakes litigation, political intrigue, and personal loss. As we continue to follow this case, we will keep you updated on any new developments. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay informed on the latest news and in depth reports. Until next time, stay curious and stay informed.